I think this is part eight. What do we want to do today? Let's do a main quest, maybe? Yeah, let's fix that. Fix the clock. <laughs> What's up, Panda? Change for their knowledge, they asked me to discover the identity of the mysterious figures trapped inside the clock, a device crafted long ago with a change gun. The clock appears to be unmoored in time, so I won't be able to investigate the figures until I've realigned it with the present time. Okay. Uh, I really am just, like, not sure what to do. Oh, yeah, you want me to help you on Poe? That's, that's cool, yeah, I'd be happy to. I think you are still my biggest uh, donor of uh, people I've just met online, you know, outside of real life friends. So you have some pull. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna go fix these people's clock. That's cool, dude. Just let me know. <laughs> This complex machine towers over you. Its purpose is unclear. I feel like I've already done this. Let's examine the machine. The towering mechanism wavers in the air, similar to similar to Calisteg. It appears to be in several states at once. The machine state are exactly the same location. Okay. As you pull your hand away, a memory strikes you as powerfully as if someone took a club to your chest. You are working at the clock. It is no longer transparent, but perfectly solid. There's a noise behind you, so they've come, the three traitors. They think to surprise you, but through the powers of the clock, you have foreseen this moment. There is the faintest sound of metal sliding against leather. You slap a hand on the central clock face, activating the clock's arcane powers. You're not sure what it will do to them, but it's better than what they'll do to you. There is a flash. Arcs of energy stretch out from the clock, over your shoulders to your would-be attackers. You don't see what happens to them, but they quickly disappear along with their screams. <laughs> As the last shreds of the memory fade, a swirl of energy passes through your body. Cold barbs prick every muscle. Suddenly, tidal forces arc from the clock to three ancient devices in the cultist encampment. The clock recognizes something inside you, or maybe vice versa. Either way, you have inadvertently activated the nearby devices. Woo! When I tried to interact with the clock, tidal forces erupted in my body and brought several nearby devices to life. They might provide a means to repair the clock, okay? So, like these, I guess? Yeah, probably these things. I might get lightning returns? Fuck yeah! As you approach this device, Circus Minor changes around you. People are dressed differently and speak differently. Whole new structures appear, including an enormous building rising from the edge of the square. You look down at the device. A series of images flit across its surface. They don't appear related to the changes around you. You see faces of other people and places, all of them familiar. Alright, look more closely at the changes around you. Circus Minor looks almost completely different. All the people are dressed strangely, and though they speak the truth, they use many terms and phrases that you don't understand. The square has changed as well. All the tents are gone. The buildings are more colorful and less weathered. One building in particular rises from the edge of the square. A tower of purple rock, some 50 stories high. A mural is painted on the side, though you can't see the details from here. Alright, examine the images on the surface of the device. As soon as you focus on them, you feel a warmth on your head, where your tattoo is. The images respond to your thoughts, slowing and changing at your whim. It's something about your body that allows you to do this, which perhaps means that only you can even see the images. You immediately recognize the pictures as pieces of memory, specifically the three memories you saw back in the fathoms of your mind. Wudo, Wudo, what's up? Alright, look at the memory in the Undercity. Underwater City. The memory is recent. Two men, both with tattoos like your own, are in an underwater city searching for something. The denizens of the city chase them from their query and ultimately surround and capture them. 
As you review the memory, you get a strange feeling in your mind that you can only describe as a query. The device wants something from you. Suddenly you remember, the memories in the device are possibilities. But you can lock one of the memories here, so it is the only one that displays. You don't remember what purpose that served, though. Huh. Let's look at the memory, other memories first. Somehow you know the memories from a long time ago. Centuries ago, probably, a man and a woman, both with tattoos like your own, are surveying a lush, secluded valley for some purpose you cannot recall. Look at the memory of the city under siege. Somehow you know this memory is ancient. It might have occurred a thousand years ago. A man and a young girl race through the streets of Sagas Glyphs. All around them, the city is attacked by terrible people. The Tabat, you recall. The man takes them to an ancient machine somewhere in the city. Then he and the girl disappear. Uh, okay, let's do the lock the ancient memory of the besieged city to this device. <coughs> the images of the man and the girl are the only ones that play across the surface of this device. They run past the enemy soldiers and then disappear at the machine in an endless loop. Alright. Did I do anything? I wonder if there are, like, three of these things and you, like... Uh, maybe not. Oh, yeah. There are three, yeah. You just finished two hot dogs? Holy shit. You finished Final Fantasy V today? Cool, man. That's a great game. I really like that game. A strange feeling comes over you as you approach this device, as if someone were sneaking up on you in the corner of your eye. When you look, there's no one there. It feels like something is different, though, but you can't put your finger on what. A series of images flit across the surface of the device itself. They don't appear related to the changes around you. You see faces of other people and places, all of them familiar. Okay, so I did the siege. Let's do the lush valley on this one. The images of the man and woman in the valley are now the only images that play across the surface of this device. They survey the valley in an endless loop. Infinite loop, guys! So I was talking to True about this the other day, but uh, like I'm trying to figure out which um, game, single player game, to play through, similar to how I'm doing this, like really slowly and methodically, and then like, you know, individual 30 to 45 minute let's play videos to YouTube uh, to play after I'm done with this game. So if you guys have any input, like let me know. All right, they're now in a, they search for something, are chased and then captured over and over in an endless loop. As you lock the third image, the air around the device trembles. The other devices in the square begin to glow, as though they're about to do something. Just as suddenly, the glow on all three devices fades. The image, the image you had locked to this device flickers, and then the three memories flit across its surface once more. The device seems to have reset itself. Huh. Alright, let's smash the device. Smashing in lower machinery. Let's do 95%, 19 out of 20. That's good enough. Success! You strike the machine several times. After a particularly mighty blow, a section near the base of the device caves in on itself, and shattered pieces of synth split out, spill out of the hole. The device goes dark. The images are gone, and so are the weird echoes of Circus Miner's past. You've definitely broken it. Around the cultist's encampment, the other two devices darken as well. The clock becomes solid. It no longer appears to be in multiple time periods at once. As the clock returns to solid solidity, a strange thing happens to the sky. The sun races to the horizon and disappears, and Circus Minor is enveloped in darkness. Oddly, buildings in the distance, beyond the edges of the di district, still appear sunlit. Huh. Oh god. Oh god. What's happening? The clock has started. I've realigned the clock with the present time. Fuck yeah. Yeah, I might do a Final Fantasy game soon. I could play through Final Fantasy 13, uh, 3, or 2, or whichever it was, after this. The machine is solid now. Each of the three clock faces shows a single time, though none of them point to any time measurement that you understand. You lean closer to the central clock face. Three shadowy figures still lurk within, their features almost discernible now. 
Suddenly, the figures surge out of the clock toward you. Intense pressure strikes your head like a steel spike. Then everything goes black. I screwed up the timelines. Notification? Would you buy me a game? Uh, no, I didn't. I'll have to check after I'm done playing this. Party member removed. Oh, shit, dude. This is like a... Kamose. Kamos da Vikiatu and Volin? Look at this fucking... Uh, not hallucinogen. <laughs> what am I trying to say? Optical illusion. Kamos. The three figures before you are disoriented. They don't even seem to notice you at first. All three of them have a tattoo like yours. Castoffs. What befell us? The woman is dressed in powerful looking armor. Her face bears several scars, yet her eyes have the innocence of a child. Did he do something? Are we still in the clock? I do not believe so. The second figure is tall, dressed all in black. Its height is exaggerated further by a violet, fish-like crest on the top of its head. Its large yellow eyes are squinted, scanning all around. There was a man outside the clock, but it wasn't. It was him! The third figure points at you. He is small, weary, wiry, and crouched as though he expected danger. He carries a shield at his side. He's a cast-off, he says, looking at your tattoo. Can't say I recognize him, though. What happened just now? We were ingested into your head. I saw it. How is it possible? Whoa. He eyes you suspiciously. Who are you? I'm a cast-off, like you, the latest one. The latest? She raises one eyebrow significantly higher than the other. Huh? That's not possible. We faced the changing god mere days ago, and you are not the body he wore. I might think... I think we might have been trapped in that clock for centuries, Kamos. Something about it messed with our perception. The Vargellan looks up at the ceiling, or where the ceiling would be if there were if there were one. Time and his illusion. How long is the wrong question. It turns its enormous, bulbous eyes to you. What is this place? Where are we? Inside the clock, perhaps? Oh, I scan thoughts. Outside time we were, perhaps still are. He laughs. Oh no, believe me, perceptions or not, we spent enough time in that clock to know, <laughs> right? The Vargellan shuts his eyes. Six nostrils open wide as it inhales deeply. Our consciousness is our consciousnesses were ripped from our bodies when the changing god activated his clock. Then when you appeared, it happened again. Our minds ripped from their uh chronal prison. Tronal? Chronal is right, yeah. It looks to its friends. I cannot be certain, but I believe this is part of some vast mental construct. He turns to you. Your mental construct. His eyes become nearly as large as the Vargellans. What? You mean we just went from one prison to the other? He grips you by the shoulders. You did this! <laughs> that reminds me of Cersei. He did this! If this is your mind, then let us out. Alright. Let's see. Why did the changing god trap you in the clock? Ah, yes. She looks down, embarrassed. The three of us once worked alongside our sire, helping him with his research after he brought the Order of Truth to Sagus Cliffs. We... We saw him for what he was. Selfish. Arrogant. Scan thoughts. Marielle helped us to see. I wonder what has become of her since we were imprisoned. From their anal prison? Huh. I did screw up the timelines. He doesn't care about us. Not a single one of his children. He crosses his arms and looks away bitterly. All of his projects were always about him. He didn't care if anyone got hurt in the process. What kind of god would do that? We betrayed him. Unlike the others, the Vargellan looks you directly in the eye. 
We meant to stun him, to capture him before he could escape to another body, but he was too quick for us. He activated the clock, tearing our minds from our bodies and trapping us eternally. Whoa, that's fucked up. I don't know how to get out of here. Relax, friend brother. Whether for days or centuries we survived that clock, we will survive this. If time is an illusion, then it is not our enemy. We will find a way. Wow, that was fucking sweet. That was fucking sweet. Why can't you get us out of here? Bitch. Weren't you just listening? We were trapped in that, cl trapped in that clock for centuries. I'm looking for a way out, believe me. But if Daviaktu says it's your mind, then it's your show. So long as we live, there is hope. One of us will find a way. I don't see a way out. The Vargellan stretches its neck, putting its face within a hand span of yours. It seems to be examining you. Then it says, your mind. Only you have the power to change. Hmm. What he's trying to say is that this place was created for your body, or perhaps by your body. Our sire placed within each of us unique gifts and abilities. For example, I have never heard tell of another cast-off who could trap consciousnesses the way that you have. She gives a warm smile. He would not have created this space for you without also giving you a means by which to move through it. Think, what other gifts did our creator bestow upon you? Stop smoking that good shit. Huh. Let's see. Uh, I'm what they call a nano. I chose an aspect of myself when I was born. I built a path out of the deep fathom of my mind by recovering memories I had lost. Alright, we'll just do this. I can see what you speak of, it says, and you get a momentary impression that its eyes can see through you. This aspect describes you just as I am Vargelin. Uh, Villon is observant. Kamos is foolish. I object to that description. He gives a kind chuckle. He's not wrong, and you know it. At her wounded look, he raises his hand uh, placat placatingly. I think that's how you pronounce that. It's the truth. Anyway, you've gotten us out twice as much trouble as you get us into. The Vergellan speaks to you. These aspects are descriptors of who we are, but they are not us. That you choose your aspect says quite a lot, but I do not believe that is enough to set us free. Huh. So what I am... Yeah, let's do this one. I built a path out of a deep fathom in my mind by recovering memories I had lost. Perhaps. If there were any memories here to recover. He curls his lips and looks around. Maybe I just don't know what memories look like, but I don't see anything. Hmm, it would seem we are in agreement. I'm what they call a nano. He laughs. So is the Vargellan, but you don't see him barking about it. You see, that's just the type of thing that you do. It was a path you chose, not something our sire gave you, nor a means to freedom. I don't think I have the ability you're talking about. Um, I'll catch him on chat when I'm done with this, guys. Sorry. You must. She looks at her compatriots and back to you. We each have our gifts, given to us by our sire for a specific purpose. His purpose, of course, but a purpose nonetheless. She presses a hand to her chest. They say, for example, that, foolish though I may be, <clears throat> I have nine magical gifts of speech. That is not something I chose or learned, but it is who he made me to be. He rubs his hand along the edge of his shield. I am a master of defensive arts. Our sire learned them when he was in my body, probably built my body to excel at it. I wouldn't call it a gift, but it's me, yeah. I am one with the shadows. I live in them. I breathe them. This is not some estery I, dis uh, estery I discovered, but a unique ability our sire chose for me while he was in my body. She places a kind hand on your shoulder. The gift is in you. Perhaps you have just forgotten. Our sire wouldn't have made this place for you without granting you the power to get it. Focus. Find the answer inside yourself. Fuck us. <laughs> Shut your eyes. Search for memories for this ability they speak of. You rifle through your memories, past everything you actually remember, to those memories you didn't create yourself. 
There must be a key or a door. Anything that would help you to escape this fathom of your mind. Just as you're about to give up, you find something, a cluster of sparks, nascent abilities deep within the core of your mind. You sense the abilities to speak eloquently, to use a shield within a master's skull, to lurk among the shadows as though they were home. None of these abilities seem particularly suited to creating a path out of this place, but you do sift through them. You know that you are trapped here, not because it is some puzzle your sire left for you to solve, but because you are not yet whole. This is another part, the last part of deciding who you are. In completing yourself, you will be able to open a path back to the calm of your mind. So I think I could have just like done this quest immediately after leaving the intro zone, instead of like fucking wandering around the city for six hours, not just like getting to know the world. Oops. Temp. The focus selection window will appear here. Okay. Choose the brandishes a silver tongue focus. Choose the master's defense focus. Choose the breathes shadow focus. Okay, this one sounds like dex. This sounds like strength thing. This sounds like caster, so let's just do that. That's it! You did it! What is that from? Oh, Star Wars. Yeah, when they, they stopped the trash compactor. That's it! You did it! Yay! Listen to them, R2. They're dying. Curse my metal body. I wasn't fast enough. Does this mean we can go back to the real world? I don't think so, villain. But it does mean we are free. Finally. He turns to you. Thank you, friend. We will follow. Go. Something's not right. Shadows, angels. It's safer for him to go first. <coughs> Excuse me. That was an off-camera burp. Alright, let's go ahead and save. Ooh, and I fucking leveled up. Um, alright, let me catch up on chat real quick. Um, you guys are just talking to each other, so that's fine. Da -da -da -da. Oh, yeah, okay. You guys are just talking to each other. Let's see. I believe I was going to get that, uh... <laughs> Shit, what was the name of that skill that I needed? I'm going to go ahead and... Look through some of my old screenshots. Even though this is probably... Oh, yeah, what happened? Ooh, I got a gift. Hurry up, Steam. Fuck yeah! Woo! Final Fantasy thirteen, three. Thanks, buddy. Um. Now shit, where was I? Yeah, there was some skill I feel like I needed. Uh. Wait, what? There's my butt. An Unreal Tournament. Look at that. Okay, I'm getting distracted. Fuck it. <laughs> Alright, let's see. What do I want to put my... Yeah, I really appreciate that, man. Thanks a lot. Extra effort. Increasing your max effort level will allow you to spend more effort when performing tasks. Ability... Onslaughts. Now, this is a combat ability. This seems to pop up a lot, man. So, I think I just might do this from, like, a... Yeah, I think I'm just gonna do this. Just for a roleplay, you know, learn the world, kind of... Yeah, I'm gonna do this. Perspective. The last cast-off can access the memories of previous consciousnesses. This skill represents your focus and acumen when attempting to recall those experiences. Okay. Um. Yeah, let's do that. Natural charisma. Uh, so is that it? Sweet. We need a main quest, guys. 
So I guess I'm gonna be playing Final Fantasy 13 soonish. I can also play pen and paper because that was given to me recently. I usually never drink this shit, so I'm just like shaky and sweaty. Ooh, pretty. The Spectre. I saw what happened. Are you alright? That thing almost killed you. What happened? His voice is somber. The sorrow must be gathering its strength, taking spaces in your mind to keep you from reaching your full potential. I don't know why it doesn't just kill you. Maybe the fragments aren't that strong yet. Okay. Find a way to escape the fathom. The figures in the clock surged into my mind and unlocked or perhaps created a new fathom. What the fuck's a fathom? I'm now trapped in the fathom with them. If I speak to them, perhaps I can find a way out. Okay. What's on your mind? Oh my god. That dialogue. <laughs> Something feels odd about this man, but it takes a while to put your finger on it. It's his thoughts. They aren't there. Or rather, they're there. Or rather, they're there, but they're indistinct. Hey, True Zero, you wanted a lesson on there and there? That's a really good, like, triple usage and three there's in four words, but that's correct. A kind of white noise that blends in too well with the background hush of this place. Uh, what should I? What should I do now? You know, I'm not sure. We need to find someone who can fix it. That chamber's our only hope. Without it. Thank you for fucking talking for me. My voice is getting pretty raspy. I found the reason. I don't see everything you do out there in the real world, but I definitely saw that. You have to find a way to fix it. Well, how the fuck do I fix it? How did activating the clock in the real world open that other fathom? Oh, now you're not gonna talk, huh? Who knows? It probably triggered something in your mind. Maybe a bridge you didn't have before. Maybe you did have the bridge once, but you lost it. Yeah, what about these new abilities? He considers you carefully. Your sire was a man of many talents. You're probably picking up residual memories of what he could do and building on those. He strokes his chin. I imagine you could change which abilities you are tuned to, though it will likely get harder each time you try to do it. Your body gets more set in its ways, you see. Huh. So you can change classes like you can in Planescape. Could other fathoms open? Maybe. You've already made a lot of changes to this place. At this point, nothing would surprise me. Huh. Your thoughts are fuzzy. Why can't I read them? His voice is dry, but his smile takes some of the sting from his words. I imagine it's because we're in a place of pure thought. I'm a construct of pure thought, and that our conversation is taking place on the levels of thoughts. But most things here aren't real. It'd be like reading our own mind. Huh. Hmm. This is my mind. Why don't I remember this place? It's your mind. A construct built to, I don't know, share thoughts? Wait, you know how people say, in the first place? This is definitely the first place. Well, it was the first place for me, anyway. You probably know better, since it's yours. If you don't remember now, maybe it'll come to you later. Okay? Is there anything to do while I'm here? Check the sights, whatever. Get some takoyaki. You mean apart from the cabaret acts, distilleries, and endless adventure just behind the next wrinkle in your minds? He jabs you in the arm with his elbow. Ha! And if you believe that... Sorry, it's your mind. There's nothing like that here. I've looked. Still, you've changed things plenty already. I wouldn't be surprised if something showed up here eventually. 
Okay. Who is that who appeared after I unlocked the portal? Those are reflections of someone you knew. Someone you met in the real world. You can talk to it if you want. See for yourself. Are you always here? He shrugs. Where else would I be? Alright, I'm done with you. Alright, let's go some chat. Oh, you guys just uh, talking to each other. True, abusing his mod. Capabilities, again, I see. What's down here? <laughs> Wait a sec, didn't I just level up? Shouldn't I be tier 2 or whatever? Okay, I'm really fucking confused. Fuck it. Ooh, pretty things. <laughs> the view from this window would inspire an author to pen his great masterpiece. Unfortunately, the window is boarded up. Okay. The sorrow shattered the mirror, leading back to the dark fathom. The glass shards hiss when you touch them. Empty reflection. A woman, shaped whole in the air, stands before you, her palms outstretched, and you sense something different. A smell, if emotions could smell. It is sharp confusion and a sense of displacement. Somehow this woman shade knows she does not belong here in your mind. Oh, says the specter, strolling up beside you. A reflection from a different cast-off, is it? Isn't it? He studies the outlines, stretched hands. She's lost something, he says after a moment. Something out in the world that she misplaced. Or was it taken from her? If you want to draw her here, you'll have to find it. You turn back to the woman-shaped void. She continues to face you, hands held out imploringly, ignoring the specter completely. Who are you? You fancy that you hear your words echoing in the dark, hollow space within the woman-shaped outline, and someone very distantly calling back. I don't think she can hear you, he says. For that matter, I don't think it's even a she right now. She's more of a placeholder than a person. Ooh. An arrow pointing somewhere else in the labyrinth. He peers cautiously into, an out into the outline in the air as though it is a long and potentially dangerous tunnel. You'll need to find what she's missing before you can bring her forward, and you won't find it here, I think. Okay, what is it you want? For a second, another outline flickers in her outstretched hand, a box or cube-like shape. Then it is gone, and it doesn't return. So she wants a box, basically. She wants a box-shaped thing. Okay. My realist. Welcome, what's up? Oh yeah, the woman in the rubble? That could totally be it. And she wants the box thing? Yeah. I think I have a box. Like this thing? Can I fucking uh, equip it? Put it in my... Huh. Guess not. That was a really good fucking uh, idea, though. Uh, okay, I can't interact with these. I feel like there's an extra one here. Weren't there just two of these before? And that's the end of the line. Let's see what going in here does. She was like a, a previous cast off or whatever, true. So that's a really good memory of yours. Good job. Looks like I'm back in the real world.
Alright, it looks like I'm back. Okay. So, let's just talk to these, uh, clock dicks. See if they'll tell me how to fix the chamber now. She raises... Oh, this is the wrong person. What's your story? That's all I wanted to know. Now, party members go over here. I want to talk to this person. Was... Was the night time you're doing? I don't think this was part of the ideal functioning of the clock, but uh, Mimion would know more than me. She looks strangely disappointed. You broke the clock! His eyes gleam and his fingers stop, their incessant tapping. I knew it! I knew it! He breathes. He turns to his partner and says, A new deceiver walks among us. Do you doubt my perception now? He looks at you. But we owe you the answers on which we agreed, don't we? As soon as you tell us what you saw. Do not think to lie to us again. I didn't fucking lie. Tell us! She is nearly breathless with excitement. Shadowy figures pulled me in. I was in a labyrinth. I did not see their faces or learn their names. Alright, I met uh, Kamos D and V. Disappointment creases her face. I know these names. They're not new to us. They were favored servants of your creator, castoffs who served him well. Indeed, D brought the order of truth to Sagas Cliffs, but they betrayed their holy trust and disappeared. He sighs. Nevertheless, we will honor our arrangements. You sought answers about what might repair the res uh, reson resonance chamber. We know that your sire built it with the aid of another castoff, who is still unknown to us. Perhaps one of your siblings might know where to find him or her. I know of only one other castoff still in the city, the albino assassin Mac Matkina. They call her the White Death. She wore a camouflaging cloak and brought destruction in her wake. The last I heard of her, she was in the underbelly. He restrains a shudder and then turns from you. Seek her and be gone. <laughs> oh, I didn't finish my level up, did I? That must be it. Our, yeah, I did. It says brandishes. Fuck, I don't know. Foreshadowing is real. Seriously, him or her. Alright, we increase max effort from 2 to 3. And... We're gonna give her an extra edge. An intellect. Whatever that means. Cool. So, I think that's a great point to stop. Um, I fucking did a huge update to the main quest here. I need a break for some real food. I just had a fucking uh, boiled egg when I braked like an hour ago, so I need to eat something and then I'll probably be back. And I'm feeling pretty energetic today, um, so I might work on my D&D uh, &D, um, campaign a little bit on the stream. Um, and then Panda needs help in, what do you say, four hours? So in about three hours with Poe, so I could stream that. Um, and then maybe some more of this, but anyway, for now, I think I am out. Uh, right, that's right, true. Right, that way you can spend more of your effort points per thing, per, like, check or whatever, I think. Anyway, um, let's go ahead and quick save. And exit to desktop. Alright, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, and I'll see you later.